Okay, so uh, we will uh, first uh, discuss uh, the uh, helicity states uh, of uh, the Dirac spinner, and then we will continue on our discussion on discrete symmetries. So, to construct uh, the helicity states, let us uh, look at uh, the Lorentz transformation properties of the Dirac spinner. Delta psi, which is nothing but the commutation relation between j mu nu and psi under Lorentz transformation is uh, given by minus i x mu del nu minus x mu del nu plus half sigma mu nu at mu and psi and uh, this is the orbital part of the angular momentum and this is the spin of the Dirac uh, particle. From this relation here, we can derive the commutation relation between the angular momentum operators and uh, the creation and annihilation operators that appear in, in the expression for psi. So, so, to do that, let us recall B s of k is a integration d q x e to the power i k dot x u s dagger k psi of x and uh, B s dagger of k from this expression is given by d q x e to the power minus i k dot x then psi dagger which is psi bar gamma 0 u s of k all right so so this basically implies that j mu nu b s dagger of k is given by d q x and then you have psi bar of x this will act uh, from the right. So, therefore, this is 1 over i x mu del nu minus x nu del mu plus half sigma mu nu. then gamma 0 u s of k u to the power minus i k dot x. So, what I what I am interested in is in this commutation relation and then you can see that if I simply substitute it here, then uh, uh, the if I simply substitute it here in this expression, I get this result here. You can derive a similar expression for the commutation relation between j mu nu and d s dagger of k and this commutation relation is given by minus d cube x v s bar of k e to the power minus i k dot x gamma 0 i x mu del nu. Now, this will act on psi from the left minus x nu del mu plus half sigma mu nu psi of x. Okay? 
all we are interested to find is given these states that is B is dagger of K on vacuum or D s dagger of K acting in vacuum, what are the spins for all these states? Okay? So, that is what we are going to derive and then to do that, we will just use this relation here. Uh, you know that uh, this is a C s dagger of k acting on the vacuum. This vacuum has a spin 0, right? it is a, it's a state with it is a spin 0 state. So, this j 1 2 acting on the vacuum state is 0. Therefore, this quantity here j 1 2 acting on c s dagger of k is nothing but the commutator of j 1 2 c s dagger of k acting on the vacuum and then I can use these commutation relations here these are c s according to our notation this is C s dagger. So, we can use this expression here and then you can act uh, this quantity on, on the ground state and then we can derive what is the eigenvalue what what is the j 1 to eigenvalue of this state. Similarly, we can do a similar exercise for these states. So, I have j 1 to d s dagger acting on k 0 is basically given by the commutator of j 1 2 c d s dagger k acting on 0. So, this this relation here is going to give me the the j 1 to eigen value of these states. So, to do that let us let us consider what is known as the Pauli Lubensky operator which is given by W mu which is minus half epsilon mu nu j epsilon mu nu rho sigma j nu rho p sigma. Because of the anti-symmetrization here and because of the presence of p sigma, what this operator will do is that it will project out the orbital angular momentum part and then it will only care about the spin of any given state. Let us see this in, 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 in more detail, especially we will, we will see that the if we have a unit vector, not, not a unit vector, but a properly normalized space like vector, which I will call as n mu. So, what, what we will do is that we will define a vector n mu and then we will show that n mu w mu divided by k divided by m acting on any eigenstate of momentum is equivalent to. So, if you have an momentum eigenstate
is same as J12 acting on the So, so, so our goal is twofold. One thing is this operation on some momentum eigenstate is same as J12 acting on momentum eigenstate, that is number one. And number two is we, we will have, uh, 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 we will show that this the, in this expression the orbital part of the angular momentum just drops out. So, so only thing you get here is the spin of the state. So, that, that, that gives you the spin of the state. Let us define this vector n mu, which is a t mu minus k mu k dot t divided by m, m divided by mod k. So, so the property of this vector is that it is of course, this vector lies in the t k plane okay? and uh, where t is unit vector along the time axis t mu equal to 1 0 0 0. So, and this is uh, orthogonal to k. So, so this is a vector in the t k plane and n mu lies in t k plane and it is orthogonal to the vector k mu. n mu k mu you can see that is actually 0. If you if you multiply here by k mu, you get t mu k mu here. So, t dot k here k mu k mu which is m square. So, this m square cancels with this m square and hence you have k dot t minus k dot t which is 0. So, this vector here is orthogonal to, uh, uh, to k and you can show that it is normalized such that n mu n mu equal to minus 1. Therefore, it is a space like vector and uh, it has this following property. Now, what is n mu k mu divide uh, n mu w mu divided by m acting on a momentum eigenstate? Let us try to see what, what do we get. So, w mu n mu divided by m is nothing but 1 over mod k and then minus half from the definition of w mu and then you have epsilon mu nu rho sigma j nu rho and if we consider the operation of this uh, of this operator on momentum eigenstates, then I will simply get k sigma for p sigma, where k sigma is the momentum eigenvalue, this times t mu minus k mu k dot t divided by m. divided by m square, but it does not matter as you can see this k mu k nu here will simply drop out because of the anti-symmetry between mu and sigma. So, this this term some second term here simply goes away. What is left here is minus 1 over 2 mod k and epsilon mu nu rho sigma j mu rho k sigma t mu. Okay. So, what is this quantity here? t mu is a unit vector along the t direction. So, this forces mu to be 0 
and then suppose we will choose k to be along the z axis k along z axis. So, the direction of propagation of the particle is along the z axis, then I can the sigma will take the value 3. So, what you have here is simply minus 1 over 2 mod k and epsilon 0 nu rho 3 j nu rho k 3 is simply mod k because k is along 3 direction and t 0 is simply 1. Therefore, it is this is what it is and uh, hence this the, the, this will give you a factor of 2 k okay? and then we will use the notation where epsilon 0 1 2 3 is plus 1. So, with this convention this is simply given by j 1 2. Okay? <coughs> Therefore, this, this operator acting on any momentum eigenstate is same as is equivalent to j 1 to acting on a momentum eigenstate and from the definition here you can see that this uh, the orbital part uh, will simply go away because of the presence of p mu. Okay, so, so, what we are interested in now is we are just interested to see what is what do we get when we consider this action on C S dagger K on a momentum eigenstate like this and also the action of this operator w dot n divided by m on d s dagger k acting on the vacuum. So, consider the first term first, this is nothing but it is just as we have argued, this is the commutator of j 1 2 and c s dagger of k. acting on the ground state and in the beginning of this lecture we have already given this expression for j 1 2 and uh, the commutator, commutator of j 1 2 with c s dagger of k. If we use that then what we will get is d q x psi bar of x sigma 1 2 divided by 2. I do not care about the, the, the orbital angular momentum part because as we have seen this w dot n does not carry because of the construction there it does not carry the orbital part. So, so I will just write here sigma 1 to gamma 0 u s of k e to the power minus i k dot x acting on the ground state. Is this clear? So, so now we can substitute for the expression for psi bar of x. So, when I substitute this what we will get is d cube x and psi bar x will have an integration over d q p divided by 2 pi q m over p 0 and then uh, sum over r c r dagger of p u r bar p e to the power i p 
square dot x. So, this is for psi bar and then now I have all these things sigma 1 2 divided by 2 gamma 0 u s k e to the power minus i k dot x acting on the ground state. Now, what you can do is that you can see that you can carry out the p integration or ok and uh, when you carry out the p integration what you will be left with is m over k 0, sum over r, c r dagger of k, u r bar k and uh, sigma 1 2 divided by 2 gamma 0 u s of k acting on the ground state. Okay. Now, this gamma 0 just commutes with sigma 1 2 because sigma 1 2 involves product of gamma 1 and gamma 2. Sigma 1 2 is gamma 1 gamma 2 commutator up to some constant vector and hence sigma 1 2 gamma 0 equal to 0. So, this simply gives me m over k 0. sum over r, this is uh, u r dagger k <coughs> sigma 1 2 over 2 u s of k and then c r dagger k acting on the ground state. Okay. So, what we what we would like we would like to do is we would like to evaluate this quantity inside the parenthesis. We can now use an explicit spinner basis for this u s. We have already seen that u s k is nothing but k slash plus m divided by 2 m times u s 0 m right u s m 0 that is what we have stated and then we know explicitly what is the expression for u s m 0. So, this u s m 0 has this form, its last two components are 0 and then the first two components I will call them as phi s. So, this is what is our u s k of 0 and then this phi s has this property that uh, for s equal to 1 it is a sigma dot k it is a spin half plus half. So, it is a phi s equal to phi s for s equal to 1 and minus phi s for s equal to 2. So, so this is the this is our choice of basis and what we will do is that we will substitute it in this equation and then we will evaluate the quantity inside the bracket. You can see that this when you substitute for u s this quantity here we have we, uh, we have a basis where k mu equal to k 0 0 0 k 3 the momentum is directed along with 3 axis 
Therefore, this sigma 1 2 will pass through this operator and then it will act on this phi s. Right? So, this action of sigma 1 2 if you remember the, the representation for gamma 1, gamma 2 that we have used, then this action is simply equivalent to this action on phi s. Okay? The first, so, so what I argue is that you, you, you just consider this action and then you, you will see that here what you will get is just nothing but sigma dot k divided by mod k or what you will get is sigma 3 here because k is along the 3 direction. So, the result of this act this acting on u s is simply equal to plus or minus half for s equal to 1 or 2. Okay? So, so all that you will get here is a this quantity u r dagger of k sigma 1 2 over 2 u s of k is equal to, if I introduce a notation epsilon s, this is nothing but epsilon s times u r dagger k u s k, where epsilon s equal to plus 1 for s equal to 1 and minus 1 for s equal to 2. Okay? And we have worked out the normalization factor here, u r dagger k u s k is nothing but k 0 over m times delta r s. Okay, in one of these previous lectures, we have shown that u r dagger k u s k is k 0 over m delta r s. So, if I substitute this here, then what, what we get is this quantity is nothing but half epsilon r s or let us write it here. m over k 0, u r dagger k sigma 1 2 over 2 u s of k is nothing but half epsilon r epsilon s delta r s, where epsilon is already defined. Therefore, this quantity j 1 2 C s dagger of k acting on the ground state is given by half epsilon s C s dagger k acting on this. Okay. So, this is nothing but j 1 2 acting on C s dagger k ground state. Therefore, C 1 dagger k has helicity plus half positive helicity state and C 2 dagger k acting on the ground state has helicity minus half. We can work in a similar way for these two states d 1 dagger k acting on the ground state, this will have helicity minus half and d 2 dagger k 
acting on the ground state will have a helicity plus half. What we will do is that we will introduce what we will call as the helicity basis okay and uh, this is just for convenience so that uh, so that we will use it when we discuss charge conjugation and uh, time reversal so we will say that u epsilon k and v epsilon k instead of using r as as the indices what we will use is that we will use epsilon and then epsilon will be plus 1 for positive helicity state and epsilon is minus 1 for negative helicity state so this state for example is uh, so, and uh, and correspondingly we will use the operators c epsilon of k and d epsilon k and they are hermitian conjugates which are c epsilon dagger k and d epsilon dagger k here to denote these states. So, so in our notation u plus of k is nothing but u 1 k because this is the state with helicity plus half and u minus k is nothing but u 2 of k whereas, v plus of k is v 2 of k and v minus of k is v 1 of k. This is just for convenience that, uh, that we are introducing this notation. Now, let us consider charge conjugation. We have seen, we have already discussed in the last lecture that in the spectrum there are two types of particles, one with a positive charge and the other one with negative charge. So, so, what we have argued in the last lecture is that there, there must exist a symmetry which relates these positively and negatively charged particles. Let us consider the example of electric charge. Okay? You consider electrons interacting with electromagnetic field. In this case, the charge is the charge is electric charge and particles which uh, C A R dagger K acting on the ground state, they will give particles of charge plus 1, whereas D R dagger K acting on the ground state will give particles of charge minus 1. So, what we would like to see is how these two particles are related. It is best to consider the, the equation of motion in presence of electromagnetic field, then we can understand the charge conjugation better. So, let us consider the Dirac field interacting with electromagnetic field. In presence of electromagnetic field, the Dirac equation is modified so that there is minus E is plus 
minus m acting on psi equal to 0. Let us say that the charge conjugation takes this field psi to some field which I will denote as psi c. Okay? Then what will be the equation of motion for psi c? Okay, good. So, so the charge conjugate field will obey an equation which is given by I del slash plus E A slash minus M acting on psi C equal to 0. So, we should start from this equation and then we should do some operation here so that we will get an equation which, which looks like this. Okay. That will tell you, that will tell us how psi and psi c are related with each other. So, our goal is to find an psi c, so to find an expression for this field psi c in terms of psi, so that these two equations are consistent with each other. Okay. So, So, let us start with this equation here. This equation I will rewrite it as gamma mu times I del mu minus E A mu psi minus M psi equal to 0. Here there is a relative sign between these two terms. On the other hand, in this equation, they have the same sign. Okay? So, this I can achieve at least the, the sign, I can, uh, I mean, they, they will have the same sign if I do a Hermitian conjugate. So, let us consider this equation and let us take the Hermitian conjugate of this equation here. So, what is the Hermitian conjugate of this equation? It is just minus i del mu minus E A mu acting on psi dagger gamma mu dagger minus m psi dagger is equal to 0. What is, what is gamma mu dagger? Gamma mu dagger is gamma 0, gamma mu, gamma 0. So, I can write the whole thing in terms of psi bar and it will look like psi bar gamma mu gamma 0 here and this one will look like psi bar gamma 0. Okay? And then, so, so therefore, this equation here is minus i del mu minus E A mu psi bar gamma mu minus m psi bar gamma 0 equal to 0. Okay? So, I will take the transpose of this equation. So, the transpose of this equation will be gamma 0 transpose and then here gamma mu transpose minus i del mu minus E A mu psi bar transpose minus m psi bar transpose is equal to 0. So, I have not done anything fancy, I just took this equation, I took the Hermitian conjugate and then I just transpose this equation, this is what I got. Now, you can <coughs> you can check it explicitly that in any representation there always exists a matrix which i will denote as c such that c gamma 
mu transpose C inverse is minus gamma mu. Okay. In the usual representation that we are working with, in this representation our C in the representation where gamma 0 is identity 0, 0 minus identity and gamma i is 0 sigma i minus sigma i 0. In this representation, C is i gamma to gamma 0. You can explicitly check it and verify that this relation is in fact true. So, so then this simply means that I can take this equation here gamma 0 transpose and then C inverse C gamma mu transpose C inverse okay and then minus i del mu minus e a mu C psi bar transpose minus m C psi bar transpose is equal to 0. Is this correct? So, what I did is that I have uh, I have introduced an identity operator here which is C inverse C and then C this goes through. So, therefore, there is C here, there is a C here. Again here I, I have introduced an identity operator which is C inverse C. So, as a result I got C gamma mu transpose C inverse which is nothing but minus gamma mu. Therefore, this equation can be rewritten as gamma 0 transpose C inverse times gamma mu i del mu plus E a mu C psi trans psi bar transpose minus m C psi bar transpose is equal to 0. Now, you see that this equation is just identical to this equation here, provided we can identify psi c with some up to some phase vector eta c, if this is equal to c psi bar transpose, where c is equal to i gamma 2 gamma 0, then in fact we get this equation. Okay. So, so this operation, so therefore what we have concluded is that the charge conjugation operator operation takes the Dirac field psi to psi c, which is given in terms of psi by this relation here. Now, of course, our job is uh, very straightforward. What we can do is that we can consider the mode expansion for the field psi in the helicity basis you can show that especially the the V epsilon k is nothing but C u bar uh, transpose epsilon k and uh, u epsilon k is C v bar epsilon k okay. and, uh, and then uh, 
this will imply that the operators c epsilon k and uh, d epsilon k are related in the following manner. C c dagger is eta c d epsilon k, whereas c d dagger epsilon c dagger is equal to eta c b <coughs> c dagger epsilon of k. So, as expected, what it does is that what the charge conjugation does is you all you have to do is that you have to consider this c psi c dagger and then you have to relate this with eta c c psi bar transpose okay and then you compare the coefficients in this equation you will see that the the creation and annihilation operators c d etc satisfy this relation therefore when you do this arch conjugation it takes a particle to the antiparticle this is what it basically means because the c is under charge conjugation gives a d and a d on, on charge conjugation gives you a c as expected you can explicitly write an expression for c in terms of the creation and annihilation operator i will give this expression to you and then I will ask you to verify this. You can in fact show that this is equal to C 1, C 2 where C 1 is e to the power minus i d q k over 2 pi cube m over k 0 times sum over epsilon which is plus or minus 1 lambda times b epsilon dagger b c epsilon dagger c epsilon minus d epsilon dagger d epsilon whereas c 2 is equal to e to the power i pi by 2 d q k over 2 pi q m over k 0 sum over epsilon b epsilon dagger minus d c epsilon dagger minus d epsilon dagger times c epsilon minus d epsilon ok. So, so, so this is a this is a homework for you you take these expressions for <coughs> C 1 and C 2 and then you see that this in fact satisfies this relation. All right.